Hello all and welcome to the first episode of It's All Up There and I'm very very excited to be bringing you space sciences and astronomy news finally. So if you're excited about it too, consider subscribing to this new channel of mine. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about a terrifying parking job on an asteroid, driving a little bit on Mars, and some active volcanoes potentially on Venus. So what's the scariest parking job you've ever had to do? Mine was on the side of a mountain in the middle of the night. But what if you had to do a parking job tens of millions of miles away? OSIRIS-REx has been diligently studying asteroid Bennu since late 2018. One of the primary objectives of the mission is to grab a sample of Bennu and return it to Earth in 2023. And mission planners assumed it would be a piece of cake to do so. But upon arrival, they found a literal rubble pile. The spacecraft had not been designed to handle this rugged terrain of Bennu. It was slim pickings for prospective landing sites, but four were chosen and named after birds. Nightingale, Kingfisher, Osprey, and Sandpiper. And after poring over the data from OSIRIS-REx's laser altimeter, they determined that Nightingale was likely the safest one. But don't be fooled, this is still quite a challenge for the team. Picking a spot to pick up a sample is a balance between the risk to the spacecraft and the reward of what kind of scientific sample you may be able to bring home. The biggest risk is a mound of boulders that OSIRIS-REx's navigators have dubbed Mount Doom. They're nearly 30 meters above the bottom of Nightingale. That is a good building-sized obstruction, and you're trying to go around that while touching down and grabbing a sample in an area that's only about the size of a few average parking spaces. On the surface of Bennu, OSIRIS-REx will use the touch and go sample acquisition mechanism, TAGSAM. It's at the end of a three meter robotic arm, and when it's as flush as it can be with the surface, it'll fire a jet of nitrogen gas. This will stir up rocks and regolith that'll end up as samples in the collector. Now, as it pulls away, the spacecraft will actually check to see if it did get any samples. And if it doesn't feel like there's any in there, it'll repeat the maneuver as there's enough nitrogen gas on board for three attempts. Nature just loves to throw us some curveballs every once in a while, like a surface not being what we expected. Now, this also happened to Curiosity when its wheels began to be damaged by a surface on Mars a lot harder than was initially expected. Now, the next rover, Mars 2020, just took its first driving test, and it's got some upgrades that should help it out. A few weeks ago, just up the freeway from me at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, Mars 2020, the next NASA rover set to be launched this July, was taken for its first spin. Mmm, don't you just love that new rover smell? Now, although Mars 2020 looks a lot like Curiosity, it's a little bit heavier thanks to a different instrument package focused on hunting for life, and wheels that are a bit beefier to handle the worst terrain Mars can throw at it. Look at it, rolling on some 21s, damn! Thanks to its rocker bogey suspension, it can traverse obstacles that are nearly 0.8 meters tall, 150% the size of its wheels, which my overlanding Jeep herself is 100% jealous of. Landing is scheduled for February 18th, 2021 at Jezero Crater, so get your plans ready now. I'm so jealous. I totally want to go off-roading on another planet someday. Someday. And of course, you know, I'm going to need proper four-wheel drive to do so, not all-wheel drive, so sorry, Cybertruck. But there is one planet that I definitely don't want to go off-roading on, and that is Venus. It is too hot, it is too much pressure, just be very, very bad. And in addition to that, it seems that there may now still be active volcanism at the surface of Venus as well. In a great example of how data from a mission doesn't stop giving results once the mission ends, the European Space Agency's Venus Express Orbiter, which ended its mission in 2015, has provided more evidence of recent volcanism on the surface of Venus. Of course, recent on a geological timescale means something has occurred sometime between now and 2.5 million years ago. Researchers at the Lunar and Planetary Institute took one of the most common basaltic minerals, olivine, and placed it into a laboratory that generates an atmosphere similar to the blazing heat and caustic properties one would find at Venus' surface. The olivine was found to be coated with iron oxide within a few weeks, much more rapidly than anticipated. Based on data of Venus' surface taken by the infrared and visible thermal imaging spectrometer on Venus Express, comparing that with the similarities of the lab-generated coated olivine, coupled with spikes in the detection of atmospheric sulfur dioxide, a gas volcanoes here on Earth make, and it looks like Venus may still be geologically active. 
NASA's next round of Discovery class missions, Discovery 15 and 16, have three mission proposals that would target Venus. It's a planet of incredible extremes and deadly beauty. I wish we'd study it in greater detail, as the last US mission was the Magellan Orbiter in the early 90s. Hey, NASA, it might be time to give Mars a rest. So there you have it, your first edition of It's All Up There has come to a close. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. I'm looking forward to bringing you this news weekly. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this everywhere you can. That way I can hit that magical 1,000 subscriber mark sooner rather than later, and I could start going live a lot more so I could interact directly with all of you. And of course, I'm still working on this, trying to get my footing with it and the friction and momentum with it, so bear with me for the next couple of weeks as everything comes together. No word yet on a Patreon or anything like that, but when I do, I'll let you know. So that's it. We'll see you at the next time, and remember, keep exploring.